straight now. They're the last two or three hundred metres of the course. And uh, for those of you watching uh, on the live stream around the world, we do like to light up. So I hope you won't find the next few minutes offensive, but we are going to give Robert a little bit of a hard time. And uh, to start with, I think we've seen some of the inequalities between the healthcare systems around the world. And uh, the reason the French system is so good is one of their senior managers did have a problem a few years ago. And, and this, I think, will explain why things have improved in France. No, it's not running. So this, I think, explains, you know, why the French system has improved. Do we have sound? No. Sound? So this is the, the senior manager at the French clinic here. Before he worked in AMC and then UMC, yeah, he was on a boat. Yeah, he was uh, he was a captain in the North American fleet. So this is the Dutch Navy. It's an American accent, but they have American. Accent. Again, this is the USS Montana requesting that you immediately divert your course 15 degrees to the north of the North Ocean. Please don't care about course 15 degrees to the west of the North Ocean. This is Captain Dawn. You will divert your course over. Thank you, Captain Dawn. Thank you. relocation and other aspects of the signal plastic and staging surgery and, and Wilco is going to be the bad cop. Uh, I know you can't believe he said that. And then, and then finally, Wayne, come all the way, probably come the furthest from South Africa, he's going to make some final comments and, and Dwayne's an interesting guy as well because he was the advisor for District 9, the film which you might have seen and, and, and when he does his final little demonstration about equalising healthcare I think you'll understand why he was made the advisor for that film. Okay, uh, we'll go. Robert. Put, put Robert on a chair in a minute. <laughs> no, I don't want you. <laughs> Are we still streaming? <laughs> of course it is. Then it can't be spicy. Okay. <laughs> Here? <laughs> why did you choose this? Uh... Come on, sit down. Be quiet. <laughs> 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 no question, you're always nasty, so it's... Okay, okay, good, good. good. I, I think before being nasty, it's also a good prelude, it's, it's extremely nice surgery we've seen, although we didn't see the results of the surgery yet, but anyway, it was great surgery. But one thing to remember is there are many variables, and Robert, help me thinking what... Variables may determine outcome. <laughs> Measuring. <laughs> hey, there you go. No, 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 measuring that you mean. I thought you referred to audiology. 
Because <laughs> there are many different outcomes, and of course, this, uh, it's undisputed the quality. I mean, I mean everybody's convinced, fantastic quality. But I think one of the questions is: Can you do you think that everybody in this audience will ever do the celestic bending? Well, thank you. <laughs> and the next question is: <laughs> Do you think that everybody will do Mali's relocation deliberately? Deliberate. Thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> come on, Robert. Answer. Uh, well, yes, I think no, so. No, no, no. What do you mean by deliberate? Who in the audience thinks we'll ever do celestic bending? Ah. So there you go. I see some British fools and some very good scriptures. <laughs> <laughs> so I need some more years to convince everybody. Okay. Now, uh, Robert, but the honest truth is, of course, it's not only about convincing. Because who is convinced that celestic bending will give, give a good result? Who thinks that Robert's results are good? <laughs> okay. <laughs> But who thinks that he would? Uh, who who thinks would uh, get the same results as Robert would get with Celestic <laughs> Bending? Oh, come on! Gas in the BMW. Come on! No, can I comment on that? Can I comment? Yeah, yeah, well, it's a question. No, you could get the same results. It's just because I have the chance of uh, being here in a clinic where I'm operating a lot of patients, which means that I have a great experience now in the stapy surgery and also the reconstruction. It's not because I'm a better surgeon than the others. It's just because I have the chance that I have this experience. That's the point. So if you, if you convince that the fact you can improve yourself, you will get better results. That's the point. So it's not a question of difference in terms of... Uh, okay. Uh, it's true, I really feel that. Except Wilco, who cannot, but it's different. I'm already very special. Now, of course, there are many factors that influence your results. Part of it is surgical technique. Of course, it's the setup in the OR that will make a big, big, big difference. Always the same nurse, always the same coffee, always starting late. Robert can sleep in because he only does two patients a day. So, I mean, there are many factors that will help getting good results, Robert. Yeah. But, okay, I think a good surgeon starts with choosing the right patient. Oh, yeah, a good indication. Because we haven't, we haven't talked about that a lot. Can you tell us? I think it's true. Choosing the first patient, and second point, this is, uh, I think, an important uh, step. You need to face your failures. If you look to your failure, you need to accept your failure, the fact that you can fail. That's the first point. Then you need to be able to talk about your failure, presenting directly in front of everybody your failures and discussing about the failure, accepting and then sharing the failures. I think it's the way to improve. You're absolutely right. We, we need to be honest about our results. I think yeah. that's true. Um, you, have you ever tried, for the camera, for the, the internet, have you ever tried the Dresden Clip Preston? No, never, but I'm very interested in it. You, you should try, because it would be very, because as uh, working in healthcare, we should try to achieve proof. Of yeah, what but we do. you know the, re the main reason why I didn't try? For, until now, your results, okay. no, it's not that. It's not only that. It's because the uh, the fact that the head is not HA, it's titanium. So in with this procedure, you need all the time to interpose yes. a cartilage. Yeah. And for me, it's something which is a part of a regression compared to HA, which is perfectly uh, by compatible. Oh, but but so, like the discussion this morning, uh, you used the malignant disc prosthesis and the uh, Grace Medical adjustable prosthesis. Then again, you you had to use cartilage quite a bit. Of oh no, with the MRP, actually. of course. Because yes. you could have why if you would have had the Dresden clip piston, which I would have used because I would not be able to do your surgery, maybe. Uh, why, I'm, I mean, I'm that, sure that I, I disagree. You know that, but anyway. Yeah, but it, it could have been an alternative, huh? Cause yeah, yeah, of course. John asked me because no, he, I, I, he doesn't I, I want do to do agree. it. I do agree. <laughs> okay, so so what's the first lesson that we learned today? I agree. <laughs> That's the first time that he agrees, actually. No, very good. So I, th I think a successful ear surgeon is a successful doctor that's able to select the right patients.
And I think what we've seen today is very nice ideas to have in your toolbox when you run into a surprise, because we all still run in surprises. Uh, oh no, John. Oh. So I was talking about the audience. Well, okay, I'm talking about the audience thing. The audience thing. Okay, what do, what do you think about John? No, no, no. <laughs> Come on. Final 15 minutes. Be controversial. Come on, ask him some difficult questions. That's why you're here. Please. Or you're all stunned. Good. Uh, a New Zealand one. I'm, I'm not sure it's a difficult question. It's just. The, we sort of discussed it yesterday, and I didn't really come to a conclusion in my mind. Um, your Malleus relocation, you, you've made the Malleus very mobile. And if you attach that to a piston, I, do you have results for that? It strikes me, just intellectually looking at that, that's a very risky situation. I would say risky, not risky, but you may have maybe more failure in this case. But uh, I have data, but I cannot tell you the results now because I need to go to my database and yeah. select the items. But of course I've done. And it's more unstable. You are absolutely right. It's good if you put a, if you put a, a, a real uh, prosthesis uh, with a large head underneath the relocated malice because the prosthesis itself will help to stabilize the, the, the malice also. But with a piston it's more light and if you have an hypermobile uh, malice it's not good. This is why I use now the MRP in this situation. If I have a really loose malleus, then I don't use it anymore. And I use the malleus replacement prosthesis, which is very stable. But it's not risky. If you attach a, a piston to a loose malleus, there's no risk in terms of having more complications, in terms of sensory neural hearing loss. Yeah. It's just more risky for the stability and, and then the success rate. But, but to be honest, we all know that long-term results of TORP use, not in this technique, max at 35%. Yep. For, for what? TORP use in middle ear surgery, not, not lo looking at... No, I'm not looking no, at... No, no, I agree with what you on say, but... On average, it's, it's No, it's true, but it, it, it's also depending on the, the, the osteocular chain situation, because I use TORP despite the presence of the yeah. large. So you need to say TORP with no superstructure. I, I was not talking about your results. If you look at no, the no, literature, no, long-term results for TORPS are not very good. Of course, there's frequently chronic ear disease and many other things, and there you go with the patient selection again. It always strikes me strange that Robert prefers to use a TORP over a PORP. But apparently, no, no, no. I had, the results. I had to interrogate you. Or no, no, but I understand that. Yeah. But the, at least the way you fix it, you get a stable TORP. And I think that's a very interesting idea because a TORP is always has instability, and especially with them, uh, what, what you suggest with okay. them. Okay, Dina Kamalski. Uh, oh, that's going to be a difficult trips. one. <laughs> no, I'm not like my boss. Um, <laughs> okay, thank you. You, <laughs> you said everybody can get uh, get good in this surgery, but uh, of Almost course the everybody. numbers also are important. How many patients do you think you should do to finish a learning curve, and how many should you do each year to maintain it? Do you have an idea about it? Because we always have this discussion. That's a good question. May I have another question? <laughs> it's a difficult question. I don't know the answer, by the way. It's because I think the, uh, the, learning, the learning curve is depending on each person, uh, each experience. So it's, I don't have a, a specific re answer for this. And I think it's a kind of continuous, continuous uh, learning curve, uh, having a permanent experience, I would say, because you improve all the time, because you make mistakes and you learn from your mistakes. So it's, it's, it's difficult to reply to your precisely to your question. Okay, but... What, 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 what? No, it's very difficult. You no, need, sev you we need we several years. We have but you know, you know, when I came here, when I came here, I was starting immediately here, and I, have, I had done few cases of stapidotomy before, but not many, very few. So I came here, and I learned, and I must say that, I learned directly with Jean Bernard Cos, and I picked up each steps precisely, including the material, the, 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 uh, the speculum holder, the laser, and all this stuff. And I, I didn't take too much long to get really good results. Over the, 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 the first, I would say, even the first one was great, a cl complete closure of the airborne gap. Uh, the first year was perfect. I mean, if you start with the good uh, uh, instruments, 
and with the good uh, tips that you get from experienced surgeon, I think you can get good results in stapy surgery immediately. This is what you get. I mean, the only okay. figures we have in the, in the research that's been done is, is between 60 and 80 patients. But, but that's really difficult for a modern trainee. So what we should be asking is how we reduce that number, and that's the purpose no. of this meeting. I, I, think, I think, think what we should look at is how do we... Because I think the patients have the right to know how good a surgeon they have. Yes. So we should think of a way how to measure what is enough for what surgeon. I think that would be fantastic. Then again, I hear Robert say about the airbone gap. And actually, that's something that frustrates me quite a while. Because the patient doesn't care about the airbone gap. So no. why do we, we surgeons talk about the airbone gap? But the patients don't want to know the airbone gap. They want to know the pure tone audiogram. That's what we should, should be talking about. How come we still don't report the right measures? Vincent? <laughs> Goldman, thank you for your question. Um, well, it's true. I think you have to take care about the opposite year also, and not only the uh, yes, uh, single but the, year. But the airborne gap is something that surgeons like to exchange at the, uh, exchange at the bar, drinking a good glass of beer, and say, look at my airborne gap, I'm very good. But the patients really want to know, what's my pure tone audiogram, or what's the gain that I will get? Why don't we report that? I don't report it, but why? Yeah, maybe, but you think it would be better for the patient or more? Uh, Every patient asks you how many percent deaf they are. Yeah, this is the way they do. Because it doesn't mean anything. They ask, you, they ask you if you say the airborne gap. I don't speak about the airborne gap with the patient. They ask me, uh, um, uh, what am I going to gain? So I say, today you have 50% hearing loss. After surgery, we'll get residual 10%. This is okay. how I tell them. Okay. So Something we, like we should talk the language that the patient would like to Yeah, hear. yeah, of course. Okay. That's, that's my point. Okay. Language UK. Okay. I have a question. Um, when you have patients with a medialized tympanic membrane with a severe two-phase patient, <laughs> you mobilize the tympanic membrane, you put a torp in. When I do that, it looks quite well, let's say, for about six, eight months, and then I see them later. Yes, of course. And then the whole uh, torp is like skeletonized and yeah. the tympanic yes, very, yeah. very nice drape. <laughs> Do you have any ideas what to prevent that slow it down? Any ideas? This is a, uh, a southern discussion. France climate. <laughs> the climate no, in we, France have also, we also have that in France. It's a continuous discussion. We still don't know how to improve this kind of thing. It's a very long term discussion. There's some uh, few tips in France, but it, it doesn't work for some, for some reasons. And <laughs> No, no. It's the, if you have a station tube, if, if you have a station tube dysfunction, whatever you do, you have the same thing. Except suppose, you, suppose if, you, a lot of if you put a, a cartilage, but if you yeah. put a thick cartilage, then the hearing is not yeah. good too. Okay. So uh, then maybe a tube, of course, in this case. But that's the. Okay. Uh, let me just uh, take this opportunity to thank everybody in the course. Thank you, delegates, for coming far. We want to thank um, the, uh, especially the people at the back here, the audio visual guys. Uh, they've done an incredible job. Maybe they can just come out <laughs> so we can see them on deck. Hi, Jan. With our interpretation at the back. I really want to thank the Theatre Sisters. I know they're not here uh, live at the moment, but they really just please convey our thanks to them. They really did a hard work behind the scenes and uh, to make it easy for us to enjoy great surgery. So thank you very, very much for that. And then lastly, we want to thank the French surgeons. To Robert, to Renault, to uh, Thibault, and uh, the front of the team. Yeah, thank you very much. We learned a lot from you. And again, tips. Amazing. We hope to see you.